Today we're going to talk about the cloud kitchen business. Let's say you've been ordering from a restaurant for the last two months and today you want to visit the same restaurant in person and you look at the location on Google Maps or Waze but you're just not able to find it and that's because this business doesn't physically exist. What that means is that this is a virtual kitchen wherein if you place the order online you get that order shipped to you directly and the location of your delivery is shown to you but that doesn't necessarily mean that the business doesn't exist or oh, it does but it's a kitchen and they have a fulfillment partner like one of the above applications and you can go ahead and place an order with one of them and that gets delivered to you so what this means is that there's no space for people to come in and sit at the restaurant and dine and you also don't need to hire a lot of staff to maintain it because it's completely virtual the delivery of that all you need is a kitchen and the first big challenge of any restaurant owner is that they're going out and renting a place and they're not even sure whether the idea is going to click they're not sure whether that's the right market and if you've not surveyed the buying patterns of your customers in and around you're not even sure whether people are going to come in and buy and the other thing is that your operation cost is low now what are your expenses when you have a cloud kitchen you have a staff you have people that cook for you you have people that come in clean regularly you also have a day-to-day -day operation cost to buy the supply to make the product but you don't have to get expensive furniture expensive plates now assume a full-scale restaurant you have 200 to 300 people coming in uh, every three hours especially in the evening now imagine how many plates break every week of course these plates are going to be expensive because they're going to be of very high quality and with that your operation cost goes up significantly with a cloud kitchen you don't even need to have plates because you're just having uh, packaged food and packaged boxes that you can go in and put food and then deliver it to the customer and also you don't really need to look at delivery yourself you can use any delivery partner to go ahead and finish your delivery so your operation cost is low and also you've managed your risk because you've not gone out and spent your life savings and starting a restaurant but you've taken a little bit of money maybe you have a partner on board somebody from the food industry and that will be great and you have gone ahead and started a business and you're trying to see whether people are ordering your product also you have a pricing advantage why because your margins are better than a full-scale restaurant for example let's say a customer breaks a plate and your margin on a particular dish was just about four dollars and because of the reputation of your restaurant you don't want to create a scene so you let the customer go and that's just one instance but this is one case where the margins are very thin and it's difficult for a restaurant to recuperate uh, for example when uh, in the United States when the government raised the minimum wage from eight dollars to twelve to fifteen uh, a lot of restaurants went out of business because they were not able to afford to pay their staff and just by a few dollar increase and I'm sure it's a very big number especially when you count the number of hours in every month per staff but in a cloud kitchen business you do have a pricing advantage because your current pricing is for your chefs I mean, that's that's the cost that you incur and the margins are also better than a full-scale restaurant and also you can then put those margins back into the business so you can invest in different kinds of products and from one particular cloud kitchen you can have three to four different brands that are on your delivery partners list and of course your advertising can be channel specific let's say you're working with three different partners and your uber eats orders are doing pretty well right now what you can do is you can increase your advertising budget to uber eats and ensure that you have a lot more orders coming in from that channel just so you can test out more products so your advertising is also very 
very limited. You can also, of course, invest in banner ads or something like that. But if you're optimizing for conversions, you're better off optimizing at the channels where you're actually getting orders. And for you, that might be your food delivery company. So even with advertising, you don't have to ex uh, experiment with a lot of things. You can just look at what's working and that reduces the risk for you significantly. Especially we're seeing a big trend with the expanding delivery market and because of which the barrier to entry is very low. Now, we'll actually get into why I mentioned uh, barrier to entry in both pros and cons, but I think with the bracket, uh, you can actually figure that, figure that out. But yes, it's become significantly easy to start a business in the cloud kitchen space because once you get your licenses right, you figure out what team of your restaurant is going to be and you start to understand uh, what channels have what kind of products and what's being ordered the most, then you can go ahead and start a cloud kitchen business. And of course, with that said, you're going to have less in operation headache. Why? Because the only risk you have is to manage your staff and pay the rent and get orders whereas running a full-scale restaurant has a lot more moving elements so because you've limited the moving parts of the business your operating headaches are also very low now jumping to the con side first thing is visibility so we can look at this from an advertising point of view and visibility as well especially if you're starting out you might just be advertising on the channel that you're present in so like Uber Eats, but you're only visible within that app to people outside the app unless there is word of mouth marketing or referrals happening, then your visibility is very low. Now, some cloud kitchens choose to have a referral program in place wherein your first couple of orders are placed through the food delivery partner, but later you can give them a coupon code to place an order via your website then the order is logged in and delivered to the customer. So visibility might be a problem. Second, you're relying on technology. What if it becomes harder for the customer to order online? You're missing a complete segment of people that don't even order online. Uh, of course, with e-commerce and internet adoption becoming bigger and better, this might actually be a good thing. So this won't really be a very big point but of course it, it does matter a little bit the third thing is low barrier to entry now, of course because it's easy there is a lot of competition in this space competition because since a lot of people have figured out how to optimize and get the best themed cloud kitchen out there into the market it's become easy for people to do so and the increased competition might have to lead you into reducing your prices. Now, one thing you can do is you can be very niche. For example, instead of starting a regular place that serves everything, you can just start a place that does vegan ketogenic recipes. But that's really up to you. Uh, a lot of uh, Indian restaurants are uh, being opened up and in Indian cloud kitchens are being opened up uh, and, and that's one thing. Uh, some people really like falafel, so there are only falafel places uh, that have turned to cloud kitchens and said, let's go, we're going to create a cloud kitchen with falafel as the theme. So that really niches it down. So people searching for just that will be able to find a restaurant or a cloud kitchen that does just that. Uh, and of course, these kind of foods work very well with cloud kitchens. Because if you open a falafel only restaurant, chances are people looking to try something and taste uh, different varieties might not come there. But somebody ordering might order two to three different things or maybe just one dish from one particular cloud kitchen. So your chance of getting that conversion is much higher uh, if you niche it down. The fourth thing here is dependence on food delivery companies. So let's take an example of the internet today. Uh, your search engine, uh, Google, Bing, well, these being the top two, I would say. Uh, just taking Google and Bing, 
uh, there is a lot of reliance on this and typically when you're looking at browsing the internet uh, somebody that niches it down so let's say somebody that's more focused on privacy might look at an option like DuckDuckGo but somebody that's unaware of privacy being a key metric might not even look at that so each each application might have a different theme that they're optimizing for so some companies might be going for volume some companies might be going for uh, let's say quality some food delivery apps might also have an in-house dining option and they might be optimizing for that so reliance on food delivery companies might not be the best for you but it can also be taken as an advantage that there are only few channels that you have to compete on and if you have a decent margin then you can actually build up an advertising budget over time so coming to margins the reason you don't have very thin margins in a cloud kitchen is that at least compared to a restaurant it's much lower but yes there are thin margins because you're actually buying product and you're selling it uh, trying to make a complete dish and especially at the initial stages you'll actually have to give your customer a full discount just to get them in the door now these might cause thin margins in the beginning compared to a restaurant of course they're going to be much much better in a cloud kitchen but the way you can solve that is by focusing on your costing so let's say uh, if you've seen any of the popular cooking shows you'll notice that they mention 50 grams of item a 20 grams of item b three three spoons of item c the reason this is all mentioned one is of course it optimizes the taste second it optimizes the cost for example let's say every day your cloud kitchen delivers 200 orders and you are putting in 20 grams of food into that dish extra per dish so that is actually 20 grams per dish into 200 dishes into 30 days and if you look at the monthly loss that's going to be heavy so if you optimize and do your costing right and if you see okay that cheese might be more expensive but something uh something else another dish you can actually go ahead and put more of that while adding lesser cheese so as to optimize your margins the best so that also depends on consumer behavior let's say if your users uh, typically are refund prone now that might actually happen if you start to serve a lot of orders badly that they might get into refunds and chargebacks and you might have a whole array of expenses that you didn't even account for but this is in general i mean this is a con with any business not just the restaurant industry or the cloud kitchen industry but this is any business as long as you do your costing right and as long as you put the right ingredients and serve the customer right then you're good to go but if you've optimized all these factors one last thing you might not be able to optimize for is a failure in delivery now this can happen because you're relying on a third party third party being your delivery provider so you might have made the dish on time it might have been the perfect dish but then you delivered it and something happened on the way to the customer and nor do you make the money nor does your delivery partner make the money and it might seem like a very small thing but something as simple as it's a monsoon and it's going to rain every single day and there could be delays and if you have a policy of 30 minute delivery that could significantly impact the amount of money you're making so these things matter uh, things that are outside of your control can also be taken as pros or cons but uh, uh, i mean there are pros to you know being uh, you know the weather as well let's say in summer people are more likely to order ice cream if you're in the ice cream business your business is going to boom at least temporarily so there are pros and cons to everything but it's best to always start small experiment see what's working and then proceed forward so if you're starting off a cloud kitchen all the best